such a great shirt. You say you only wear Kim's clothes so, she has, when she's out of town. Does that mean she won't let you when she is in town? Oh, my God. No, I, I do it in front of her as well. I just really take full advantage of um, go ham her when wardrobe. She's, when she's out. Oh, I'm like, what's this? Oh, what's this? Even though I, you know, I see her wear it. Is there a to part put of, it on yourself, it's like a whole different experience. Is there a part of you that feels guilty to do it if she's no. standing in the room? And nope, nope. But when we Facetime all day, when she's out, when she's out of town, she's shirt. like, "Nice shirt, great shirt, <laughs> cute pants." It's a great shirt. Yeah, it's cute, right? Yeah, it's like a double. No, it's hers. You remind me of. I think um, she wore this on Fear. I think it's like a Madison Clark shirt. Oh, it is. Yeah, and I, I was like, you should bring, you should bring that home. Oh, interesting. Because a lot of shows aren't like what ours was like. Were fashion, they, fashion forward? No, no, no. Just um, <clears throat> the wardrobe department's very like, I need you to bring that oh, shirt back. Oh, big time. And... Netflix is like that. Oh, are they? Oh. Don't, okay. don't even look at it twice because it's going back on the rack in their department. Wow. Yeah. It's not, I mean, ours could have been like that. We didn't listen. We just <laughs> took like, it. But you can like, say whatever you want, but we're still going to do it. That was us? Yeah. 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 I think something shifted at some point where productions realized, wait a minute, we shouldn't sell the clothing or give the clothing away to the cast. We should hang on to it. Oh, um, I'm so glad we're talking about this because I've always wanted to ask you this and I don't know why I don't when I see you. Uh-oh. Well, it slips. No. So we get pictures from crew members um, that do? on group texts sometimes and they're at these sales. Oh, they're did you get at, one like, recently? Yeah. It, they're at like warehouse sales mm-hmm. and- where all these shows throw their leftover wardrobes into a, you know, giant, like lo- huge warehouse, multiple shows. They let crew members come in or people in the. Um, well, they sell it. What they people do in is the they union, have- they sell it. And it's like, and there's, there was like, and it says from what show it's from. So there's uh, like tags and it's like Alice and it's like a suit. And I'm like, I should have taken that suit. Did this happen recently? Yes. What was it? Can you share? It was a suit that was actually made for me that Christy from who season found it? one. Lily, um, Lily found it. I don't remember who sent the picture, but so I'm kind of like it's okay that one. we take that we take these. You exactly. got the underwear. Yeah, I told you. There's actually a store. No, Angel sent both. Oh, okay, because there's yeah. a store in Burbank that that's I can't. Re- a- I can't remember the name of it. Is it, it. a it's store? A, it is a store. You can yeah. go in. It's on Magnolia. Yeah. Thank you. It's on yes. Magnolia. Uh, you can, it, all the clothing from all these other productions. Oh, they, I thought it was a sale. I didn't know it was a store. It is a store. And you buy, and it and it's all the clothing from past productions. And you treat it like you would, uh, like a vintage store. Or like, it's just that. Like they, What? And What's they'll it have called? a tag. I can't remember. It's a good name, though. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I literally had the wrong idea. And I Angel thought it found was Shane's underwear, underwear, and obviously unused. And I mean, she got, and I think they, she was like, "Oh, those will fit Stevie." <laughs> <laughs> she got them for Stevie, and they were selling for six dollars. I this is and what I'm I saying. was thinking, I thought, and then I thought to myself when she I sent should. me the photo, I thought I took all my underwear. Yeah, you missed. Was them. there a? I could have sworn I left that place with cobwebs. I thought. Oh, I guess I missed a missed one. Well, tell me the name of that store because Val is looking it up. Like it's Alice a clever. It's, still hanging is it around. the way we wore? Ah, that's it. The, the way, way we, we wore, wore it. Oh, and they okay. also have like I think they have like furniture and pillows. Yes, they have and furniture. Like tchotchkes. From, yep, yep. Like those dolls could have been. They could have ended up in that store. Hundred percent. They first. Yeah, they would have. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Still oh, be, um, have you been thinking about this for a long time? And um, no, it's not like it hangs in my brain. I just when it. When it's there, I forget to tell you. Okay. Okay. Okay, wow, so I have, I, have, I have some questions for you guys oh, today. Oh, great. Wait, when okay. was the last time we did a Q&A? We haven't done them in a while. I'm excited for a Q&A. You're excited? I am. We haven't yeah. done it. You we, love a Q&A. Well, because it gets the pressure off for you and- Me or, you, or us? Us. You. As a collective, you and I. And then it just, I love a question. It makes you think. Especially when they're sort of broad and out there. Yeah. Well, no, it, I you make me think, but to hear a third I am party. I'm kidding. I know, of course. I'm not tearing you. you thought I was of like course. being snappy with you earlier. Meanwhile, you like, you're having a hot flash. I was not. I was having. Well, I didn't know I was having a hot flash. Maybe. Right. You were like, because I kept doing this. I was like, I was like God, it's hot, hot and you're like, you're having a hot flash. Having a hot flash. I think that might be my first one. If that's your first one, you're it so is. lucky. Yeah. 
But they get worse. But I was looking for the cats, and I literally had to go up and down the stairs oh, like eight cats. times. I did. And so I was like, oh, I'm hot because of that. I guess- Which I still kind of think I was. I guess I don't understand why- What were you worried about with the cats? Well, because I was upstairs getting ready, and then everyone mm-hmm. came in for pants. Sure. And then- I couldn't find the cats. And I was like, you know, I get the, uh oh, they escaped. But don't you think if they escaped, the person who was at the door would say, uh oh, the cat no, escaped? No, because they, they can, they go around your feet without you knowing. It's happened to both of us, huh. me and Kim. Okay. No, you, literally, they're fast. Oh, I know. I have one of my own. I know. So you I, know. I'm fully aware of so how So I just, operate. you know, I'm responsible for everybody right now. I can't, I can't lose a you cat. You can't lose a cat on your watch. Or a dog. I 10 can't bucks, though. So I don't think you'd lose a cat. Thanks. I don't think I will. I just don't want it to happen. You won't. So am I a little bit paranoid? Yes. Well, I mean, clearly, if you were I'm breaking a sweat running around throughout the house trying to find a cat that happened to be hiding in a different closet than its regular closet of choice. No, they it, have their areas, and Chi Chi was nowhere to be found. And she was in the closet, which she's never in. The, I was like, what's this? Like when, under the- When Charlie goes missing? Missing? Yeah. I'm like, I think, oh, she's not in her usual zone. Okay. Well, she'll creep out eventually. Really? And guess what? Without fail, she shows up. You never go, oh, where's... No? Where where are you going, Charlie? Oh, we live in different households. Where are you going? Good luck trying to find a better Um, home than the one that you're currently in. You can try, (laughs) and that's your problem. But I don't think Charlie's thinking like that. Exactly. That's why I'm like, I'm not worried about where you're you're hanging out at the moment. When it's dinner time, you'll start meowing in my face because you want to eat. I never worry about where she is. Wow. But different levels of, of, of cat ownership, I suppose. Just different parenting skills. Skills. Or approaches. Approaches. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's not get so deep into that because I don't want to get you in trouble. I, yeah, I'm not in trouble. I'm actually, I've turned into this person. But, well, you have to. They are now your cats. But I have a great love for these cats, too. That's well, what I'm saying. I well, now, you kind of have to I've, because I've, it's a non-negotiable I- items. Like, they're not going to go back. They they come with the territory. No, but I actually, I did worry. I was actually worrying about Chi-Chi. Not like, yeah, oh, no, getting, Kim's going to worry about Chi-Chi. I was like, uh-oh, I'm worried. Because you're going to get fucking your no, ass you're handed looking, to you. I'm not. <laughs> you're so wrong. You're making Kim <laughs> so psychotic. No, it's just, you know, when you're a single parent, it's... It's a lot. It's a lot on your plate. Anna had to go to the desert the other day to check on the house. For like a day. Oh, my God. This has this... been months. I'm in months. I know. But okay, I... but go ahead. Tell me your story oh, nothing. for the day. It's being a single parent is tough. For a day. <laughs> I, well, she was on tour for about a, for That's true. all of May and That's bulk true. of the summer. So I've been dealing with That's true. these three on my own for quite some time. And I get it. It's exhausting. I mean- I forgot how tiring it was until the other night when I got woken up at four in the morning and couldn't get back to sleep. And yesterday I was dragging ass. You're right. Being a single parent is hard. Yeah. Anyway. (laughs) Val's like, try children. Okay. Okay. Um, Question. Okay, Val, sorry. You had a question. Do not not try children. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, actually, can I tell a funny story about a child? Yes. Can I share a good story? Please. So we just had some friends staying with us from New York this past weekend. (laughs) <laughs> and they have this little girl who's about three and a half. And she's not one of those children that are shy. She owns whatever space she comes into, even if it's for the first time. And I love that quality, like a real ball buster. And, uh, and instantly she wants to go swimming. So for pretty much from the moment she landed to the moment she left, she was always in the pool. And she meets the dogs and she goes, Kate, is Mo a, a he, she... Or non-binary. This child is three and a half. That's so cool. (laughs) How amazing is that? Yeah. And I said, wow. I said, you know what? I think she's a she. We've been calling her she since she was a baby. Um, But I appreciate you asking. And she's like, huh. That's it. Were you? How cool is that? I feel like you should have asked the dogs. Had her ask the dogs. See if she got an answer. Mo is too busy barking. (laughs) Because Mo likes to play Jon Snow every evening to do Night Watch along the fence. Oh my the God, fence. that's so funny. <laughs> I'm like, that's Night Watch. And uh, I couldn't get her attention. And then at some point, she said, Kate, can you ask Mo and Bugsy to stop barking? Oh. And I said, unfortunately, I can't. I mean, I can, but they won't listen. And I guess Peppa the pig is like, 
really popular among children. Val, do you know about Peppa the Pig? Uh, or are your kids too I old know for about Peppa the Pig, but that was not our, our time period. But you know what I'm talking uh, yeah, about. Yeah. Totally. So you know what I'm talking about? I know about? Peppa the Pig. I yeah. didn't know about Peppa yeah. the Pig. Anyway, this child loves Peppa the Pig. And so she was calling the guest house the cottage. Can uh-huh. we go back to the cottage? So cute. She's not English. Oh, I was just going to ask you that. No, they live in Brooklyn. Can we go back to the cottage? And then when she goes- Does she do an accent? Cottage. It, there's a bit of an accent. Cottage. Maybe it's a cart from the cartoon Well, my something. friend said, I said, why does she get these, this terminology? And my friend says, I swear to God, it's from Peppa the Pig. Because this is how Peppa the Pig talks and kids mimic, right? Yeah, right. And so she calls my friend Mummy. Oh, wow. Mummy. Cute. This most special kid ever. That's cute. But I wanted to share the Mo yeah. story. And I thought, incredible. I mean, it's a different age. Completely. So cool. Right? I wish I was young Don't you wish now. you kind of had that? I wish I was three right now. Sort of. I mean, not really, but uh, Not with like sense. the way the planet is burning <laughs> yeah, up and, exactly. and all that jazz. But, but no, in terms of like the, the awareness and like yeah. the vocabulary and mm-hmm. the, the I, yeah. Of course. Yes. Oh. Oh, it's amazing. Just wanted to share that anecdote. I love it. Because we had What's such her a- What's her name? Hazel. Cute. Oh, cute you have name. no idea. This child is going to be the CEO of something. Right. There's no way she's going to be an employee of anyone <laughs> ever. She's incredible. Like really special kid. Just wanted to share that. And more from us in just a moment. You know, I often ask myself, how do I like to relax these days? Well, I've been a huge fan of just curling up on my couch, maybe pouring myself a glass of wine. Um, and just settling in to play a bit on Love to Play. They have so many games to choose from. It's like that feeling when you get when you're a kid and you're at an arcade and supervised. That was always the greatest. And I love exploring Love to Play. It really brings a little bit of that Vegas magic, you know, into your living room. And you can connect with so many other game lovers at the same time. So what's really fun is you like sync up when you're playing with other people. And um, Kate and I love to play together, obviously. Love to Play is a vibrant online iGaming platform that brings the thrill of the casino right to your fingertips. Whether you're at home, you're on a break, or anywhere in between, you can dive into a world of fun. Ready to turn your downtime into fun time? Head over to www.lovetoplay.com. Claim your first 50 spins for free using promo code PANTS. And start your exciting journey today. That's L O V E, the number two, P L A Y dot com. Find excitement in every day with Love to Play. Hey everyone, we are so excited to share something that's become a new staple in our personal skincare routine One Skin. This brand has genuinely changed how we think about aging and skin health. Yes, seriously. I've been using One Skin a little while now, and it's wild how my skin has improved. It feels smoother, more hydrated, and honestly, I love how easy it is to incorporate into my daily routine. Plus, the science behind it is really fascinating. Yeah, yeah. One Skin was founded by an all-woman team of longevity scientists, and they're not about quick fixes or covering up the signs of aging. Instead, they're working with your body at a cellular level. And we've got to talk to you about how easy it is to use. You just cleanse, you pat your skin dry, and apply it twice a day. I've been using the One Skin face and eye creams, and they've just seamlessly fit into my existing routines. Honestly, if the thought of invasive treatments makes you want to hide under the sheet mask, then One Skin is the answer. It's all about working with your body's natural processes to keep your skin looking healthy and radiant without the need for anything drastic. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company by focusing on cellular aspects of aging. One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code PANTS at oneskin.co. That's 15% off at oneskin.co with code PANTS. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. So please support our show and tell them that we sent you. Okay, so I have a question from Morgan in Seattle. What are the best and worst lesbian bar names you've encountered? Okay, and then I sent you guys a list of yes of current lesbian bars just to refresh everybody's memory. Since yes, it may have been a minute. So these are bars that are open today. Of a crazy fact, um, mm-hmm. in 1980, which mm-hmm. I guess at this point was a long time ago, but it feels like yesterday Do to you, me. You, there you, were 200 lesbian bars in the U.S. Today, guess how many there are? 
26. 33. I was close. Yeah, you're, but what made you think it was so low? Because the way you say that makes oh, me think that I it has to it be up. some okay, much sorry. smaller number. <laughs> yeah, okay. But would you really have thought, I mean, it's like a crisis. What's uh, happening? Why is this, why, I mean, you owned a bar, Shane. What, what's, the, what's the issue? Was the bar successful? I you, suppose, I don't know. Uh, Dana's yeah. was very successful. Why are you, uh, um, <laughs> I just, did you learn anything uh, when you were filming that you were like... Yeah, like don't ever play poker. Okay, so here's what I think. I think a bar in general is probably hard too. I think it's one of the hardest things. I think it goes along with the difficulty of a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Right. So I used to, this is like totally crazy, but Heather and I used to have a night in um, LA at the Viper Room. And every week oh, we yeah. had to... It was called Camaro. And Cute. every week we had to think of something to do to fill the bar. And the amount of pressure that happens weekly. Like what, Leash? Like how do you get people in the door? No, but how like do you, every week, what did, what do you, what did you, how did you, what do you mean? Did you, like you had to think well, of. Well, we had a, the Murmurs had a residency and then we had other bands play. You have to like book bands. You have to, well, it's the Viper Room. It's a live venue. So it's like. I see. You have to, the pressure of getting people to show up is so enormous on a weekly basis. So if you own a bar, you're talking seven nights a week. I did a, I did a thing once a month called The Basement years ago. And it was just. Part of the reason why I think it worked is because it was only once a month. Mm -hmm. Every week, I can't imagine doing that. That would like spin me out after one evening, right? Because it sounds better, I think, in theory than in reality. Um, and we just were like, it's just going to be, uh, it's just going to, you just dance and you're going to dance to music you haven't heard in a while. And so we would, like, like Sam and I, like, our, we had very similar sentences, uh, tastes in music. And so we would just play old, old, Hip -hop, hip hop and old song music that you forgot all about because it was from like 20, 30 years ago. It seemed good. I think right. people so liked you it. Right, so you DJed. Yours was like a dance club. Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, like, I, yeah, yeah. We didn't, right. we didn't have, so you putting on like, wow, you were real, you were a Kit Porter before, before Kit Porter. Mm, well, no, it wasn't serving food. Yeah, but she got live musical acts. Yeah, I, I mean, it was. You know, she. You know, I mean, sure. Yeah, it was a Kit Porter. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I, I, I'm just saying, like, I think the pressure of having to open your doors every night and it, just figure out how to get people inside is just like ginormous. And then Huge. when you take a community that's, you know, smaller than a, like a straight, like a straight bar would be, it's just like you're, I don't know. Yet, as as a queer yeah. person, you want that place to go. You're like, please don't, please don't close. You know, palms. Don't please oh, don't the close. Palms like was the best. Like little Frida's. Please don't close the Normandy room. Please don't close. You know, and you're just like, these are our places. There are watering holes. There are like safe safe houses, right? Not safe houses, but safe places. And like they're just fun. Well, but they're ours. You know what, gay bar? I was very sad to see go away. The Oxwood Inn. Mm -hmm. It was a fucking nightmare when that closed. And now it's some ugly condominium building that they looks like took the every whole other. Build, they took the actual they building away. They took the away. whole thing. Oxwood yeah, we used Inn. to go there all the time. It, this incredible gay bar in the Deep Valley with a poster of Vin Diesel on the wall and a pool table. It was a dartboard. A it was so amazing. great. Amazing. Um, and the and a little dance floor, and a little dance floor, and the palms. You're right. The palms was just, so I, but fun. it's everywhere, and it's like so sad they're leaving. I just don't understand. Like, I hear this talk about a pandemic. Lily, like, what's our, old, our old, our old, our friend and old, old uh, assistant from the from the show. She's 25, so she's yep. out and about. She she stays up past nine, and um, she goes to Honey's, and she's always trying to get me to go to Honey's. You yeah. should come out. I think okay. Well, what everyone time? loves honey. Everyone says it's great, and I'm yeah. sure it is. But I ask Lily, I'm like, well, what time do you do you guys go out? And she's like, we usually meet up around like ten thirty. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, girl, <laughs> no. Mm -mm. But then there were like traveling nights. Where at Honey's? No, like around like nights that didn't stay in one. 
You mean parties that moved? Oh, like the the same party would move about throughout the week? Sure. Or you would just hear about a party in a different place. That's what I remember more about. Like just hearing like, oh. Like truck stop or, you know. Oh my God. When when I was touring in the early 90s, Heather and I had this book and I can't remember what it was called now. Oh, it's going to drive me nuts. Okay. This is a bummer. I can't remember the name of this book, but we had a, it was a paperback book and we would get time, get one. They'd put one out every year and you would, uh, take it with you on tour. And so you, whatever city you landed in, you would have a, a gay friendly restaurant, huh. you had the local gay bar where you could find it, um, both for males and females and you just sort of any, like any safe place to go in that community and it was so like it was our it was like our lifeline oh i love it so wherever we were we'd like and you know you'd pull into these like kind of seedy neighborhoods sometimes to find the gay bar like Mm -hmm. they sometimes they didn't have signs Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. it was such a different time Mm -hmm. everything was hidden and then you go to like dallas and you'd go to like um what was it there was like j.i's and that was the name of it well I'm from Dallas. What are the what, oh, JRs? The JR and Sue Ellen. Sue Ellen. So Sue Ellen's was the women's bar, and JRs was, and you know, those were more public, like out there, because it was like a bigger city. That's clever. But when you're like in, you know, Des Moines, Iowa, you'd have to be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You'd have to find, and it was like such a cool thing. It existed that someone put all that work in to like help yeah. people. I, part of me always thought it would be fun to own a bar. And I know we're going to say, but you did own a bar. No, I didn't because that's not what my bar would look like. But there was always a part of me that thought it would be, uh, I've always been curious, like, what would it feel like to own like a place for everyone, for that place to, you know, be the watering hole for the neighborhood? Yeah. I was and? Like, I never, I never have done it. The closest I did to no, it. Would you, like, would that interest you? I think the idea is more interesting really? than the day to day. What's what do you like about the idea? Um, just kind of it being like you're like like you're contributing to a community, and you are, <clears throat> and it's uh, like you just agree with like how the whole thing is being handled. Whether it's like I don't if like I would hire the best DJs. I would have, um, I would just it would be to my liking. You would curate it to curate like a gay it. bar you would want to go to. Correct. I would, yeah, or just any bar really. It would be a kind of bar that I would want to go to. And what would it look like? What would it? So you'd have great DJs. Yeah, I just have really like every good music. night of the week. No, not every. But it would have an it would have a jukebox with like the best music ever. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you get into jukeboxes and you're like, God, the music's terrible. These would be the hits, right? Like, and random hits and B side hits. It would be a very curated jukebox. Um, it would sort of – I like Don Hills. That's always sort of been like mm-hmm. my my uh, my yeah. northern star like- in terms of how things should look. So I would mimic it off of bar, like that place, have it look like a bar in the 90s in New York. Like mm-hmm. it was – it wouldn't be flashy and all this crap, but like everything would be quality but low-key. Mm-hmm. Like a hole in the wall. Yeah, but like – But high end. But just pur- purposeful. Like purposeful, like it would be a hole in the wall with purpose. It wouldn't. It would be. It wouldn't be. Nothing would be by accident. And then, would you? What else would you do to get people? Like it wouldn't have a sign outside. Mm-hmm. With that, or like ah, it would just. You know, it would just. It wouldn't even have a sign on. You'd have to. It would just be like the address. And that's where you come into. And would you be there every night? No, probably not. I go to bed around nine. I'm not interested. But you know, I'd show up. I'd. I'd. I'd rally. And pop in just to make sure that you know if you don't show up to a business that never succeeds. I know, but I would do this with a partner. There. I'm not doing this by myself. I need a partner. Do you want to do it? I this is the last thing on earth that would ever interest me. Okay, is owning a bar. I because I would find it to be so overwhelming. Exactly. So like, I don't know how to make people happy seven days a week. I can barely like do it in my own home. <laughs> like, <laughs> how do you how do you satisfy the masses? You know, how do you excite them? How do you it's I it's have like no idea. Well, I'm not no saying idea. you have the answer. I'm saying the pressure that I would feel would make me cave as a person. Yeah. Like I can like just from being in yeah. bands and thinking of like, I have to entertain these people tonight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? With this one show that 
me and this group of people have like rehearsed and written and put together, I can travel that to different cities, but it's the same show. And it's um, still a lot of pressure. <laughs> like, right. but if I had to every night think of something different, like, okay, tonight's going to be this and tomorrow night's going to be that. And then I to get someone to come in and juggle on Thursday. And then I got to, you know what I'm saying? Like you would. Oh, I wouldn't put on uh, sh- well, talent you, shows. I'm I'm kidding. I, I don't really mean you're bringing in someone to juggle. I'm saying you have to. I don't think it's as easy as like, I'm just going to open the doors. At all. I think, uh, listen, this is fantasy. I have of no course, desire. Nobody, in, I don't think anybody's expecting I don't need, I, I'm not interested in, yeah, I'm not interested in, you know, suppliers and vendors coming in asking for money and bringing in crates of alcohol. This all sounds awful Well, that's to what me. you didn't like on the L word. You were like, why do I got to get like booze deliveries? And everyone's like, that's because that's what a bar is. You like always had your- Oh, um, constantly you signing did, something. You didn't like that. But that's part of the business. That's all there is to do. Like there wasn't a whole lot to showcase. Well, that's a whole other category. Well, no, I'm saying that. it's but, similar. But I don't need the stress of that. Like I, I, I understand it's a very hard gig, but part of it always probably romanticized it. Of like, wouldn't that be cool? But then you, I think of like, but it would be a bar in full swing that's earned a reputation that's sort of a staple, not about starting it, not looking at it from like, what would it look like at the ground ground zero when you just open and all of the pitfalls and problems. Oh, yeah. Or you have a good, like a good start, a good year, yeah. and then people stop no. showing up. No, 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 no. Because there's a new, like more exciting thing yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe that's why Honey's does really well in LA because there's not many spots and it's, it's, it's I hear it's fun. Oh, yeah. No, apparently Honey's is like the greatest. I'm just saying there, why aren't there loads of like, why aren't there more gay – not only why aren't there more gay bars, but why are there only, like, very few? I just don't get what went wrong. Well, a lot of businesses went well, into trouble because of the pandemic. No, that's not it. Well, it certainly it is. That's certainly from 1980. But that certainly played a part. You can't say it didn't. So many things yes. closed okay, down but from that's, that. But from 1980 to 2024 – Going from 200 to 33, what happened? I have no idea because when I was younger, I would go out. Like, you, I know you age out of it eventually, but when you're in your 20s, you have the energy. You go out. You're out late. Out. You meet people. You socialize. Yeah, you drink. Girl bar. Remember girl bar? Oh, my God. All of it. Just I don't like know girl bar. What was that? <laughs> it was uh, in West Hollywood. You know the owner from the cubby hole, right? I don't know the owner, no. Is that where we went to see the, 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 the episode of the show? No. What's that place called? Oh, Henrietta Hudson's. Henrietta Hudson's. Thank you. On Hudson Street. That yeah. place was struggling, wasn't it? Well, Henrietta Hudson's used to be... Okay. The Cubby Hole used to be where Henrietta Hudson's is, which nobody knows. Everyone thinks the original Cubby Hole is where the Cubby Hole is now. Really? Yeah. And it wasn't. It was down... That's that's where I used to go after school. Different owners. All by myself. Different owners, Right. To the who owns the cubby hole today? That I don't know. No, no, no. Different owners uh, for- from Henrietta's. Yes, very, totally different place. So Lisa bought that location and, or took it over, and it became Henrietta's. And then the cubby hole moved to where you know where it is. Today. And that's over now on. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that little like street. The little street. Yeah, yeah. Um, but those those two those have survived, which is mind bending. I mean, we should actually, you know, it'd be a really cool guest is Lisa. It would, she would be because, because like, wasn't Henrietta's on the precipice of possibly closing? Like, that, it was, I have no idea. It was I little, don't know the answer. It was a bit dire, outs. I think. At but a I point. remember her from the 90s. Yeah. Very nice, by the way. Um, the nicest. Like, I, everybody like who owns these bars and, and keeps them alive, like, we have, we owe them so much because they're like, they're yeah. our place. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I just want to say to you, Kate, like, if you want to open a, a gay bar, I think a lot of people would go. I would go. I'd support. Let's not start rumors. <laughs> I'm not doing would, this. If you, I won the lottery and I had millions and millions of dollars. That's after, what you would do? Well, not with all of it, but like after I gave money away to friends and charities and then, and then, and I had, and I had, cause you get a lot of money. I'd think maybe I'd do this, but I'd get a partner to do it with. 
Interesting. As like so a, there is a li- I feel like you have a little bit of a Well, it's just a little bit of what? Like a little interest in this area. If I had unlimited funds, cuz winning the lottery, it's But what are the fun what's it's the interest, Aisha. it's not the money. Yeah, and I get a partner to do all the stuff I'm not interested. Why do you, <laughs> I feel like I feel like you're never showing up and you're leaving it all to your partner. You're like I'll show up here and there. So you just want to own one? That's or do you want to run one? You see, that's the thing. I don't think this is a fully flushed out fantasy, but you're, since you're bringing it up, like, I think you really want it. No, I'm, just I'm not saying the, that. The, you're saying if you got moment. rich, this is what you would do. I'm saying maybe I would. Maybe. Huh. You know, like, do you ever think, like, if I won the lottery, do you ever have these fantasies? Yeah, like, this is not where I, I'm think, like off in Europe, like living on a farm with a painting studio. Um, well, well, I'm living in my uh, loft space on on beachfront property in Rio, um, on uh, in Ipanema. Uh, I will have my partner running the bar that I own in Los Angeles, <laughs> and I'll get phone calls like, "Hey, how's it going?" Good luck. There's no, no way. I don't want to own a bar. I don't want to own a bar. Okay. I, I genuinely don't. It's not something. No, absolutely no. I don't. No. Okay. Because there's so much room for failure, especially these days. Like no, but. I'm just saying, if you did, I would go. Yeah, like once. Yeah, not like every day, but yeah, I would at least go. like once. And you know what? I don't. You expect know, I'd you to expect. Go. I would expect like my own stool, I'd, with my name maybe carved in the bar. Okay. And free drinks. Well, how am I supposed to make money? For, how am I supposed to make money? Well, you're so rich, apparently that. Oh, that's right. I'm rich. I forgot. That I'm not going to be there. Matter. Like I said, I'm. You in won't Rio. be there, so I'll just tell the bartender this is the deal we've struck. I'll have your yeah. <laughs> we'll have your photo behind the bar saying if this girl shows up, give her anything she wants. Yeah, um, I, I genuinely don't want to own a bar. Let's not Nobody's start a rumor. Nobody's making you sign papers. Relax. <clears throat> okay, pants. Pants. 